Have you ever wanted to paint stone walls in watercolour? In this video I'm going to show you how to do just that. So about two years ago I went to a beautiful small Spanish town called Valencia where there are many very very beautiful looking stone buildings and although I wanted to paint them it's taken me about two years to get the courage to do it. In this video I'm going to use a photo I took from a place in Valencia and I'm going to show you how to paint those stone walls, at least my approach. So this is just a 20 minute sketch and all you need is three brushes, basically a mop brush, a bamboo brush and a liner brush. Now you can use a round brush instead of a bamboo brush and you need about seven colours and you need a wax crayon and a pencil and the other basic materials. So I've listed them all below. So without further ado, let's begin and let's have some watercolour fun. Now I'm using a drawing. I've got some carbon paper and this will speed up the process. Get my pencil. Really, you should use some tape. And do all of this quite quickly because we're just tracing. Now if you want to do this by hand that's great but you have to be careful about the lines of perspective. I'll show you about that in a minute. So these lines here are not too bad but it's when you get to these horizontal lines, if you look carefully, the angle changes as you go up. And so you have to be careful about that because if you do get it wrong, it looks terrible. And no matter how good your painting is, if the perspective is wrong, it's just not going to look very good, to be honest. Okay, and then we've got a line here and a line here. And then a window here and another small window there and the door down here. Oops. Just extend these lines if your paper doesn't come to the end of your paper. Just extend them. Then we've got a figure here. Whoops. And remember, this is just a sketch. But it is so easy to get too serious and start doing a proper drawing, which is not too bad. I think that's everything. I missed a few things. Just add them in. And there we go. There's our drawing. Whoops, 
I did miss one figure so I'll just add him now Just check everything. Okay, now I think I've got everything I need. Get those perspective lines correct, it's very important. Okay. Now we're ready to paint. Okay. So we're ready to paint but for this particular painting we want to create some texture so what I'm going to do is use my pencil not the point but the side and if you've got a normal pencil it's better than this and we're going to do some rubbing like this and because I've got too much of a line effect there I'm just going to rub it in and what we're doing is creating um, some kind of suggestion of um, te texture. There we go. And uh, a bit here. Maybe I should have some perspective lines here. Just some lines to indicate angle. Oh, just trying to work out where my lines are. Hmm, not very clear. Oh, so I need a line here. Sorry about that. Okay. And then I guess it's like that. Whoops. Well, just a sketch. Ah, maybe that should be like that. Rub it in a bit, rub it in a bit. Whoops. Ah, maybe that will do. And then the next thing we're going to do is get, I guess I could do here as well. is get some wax crayon and in the light areas just go and do a little bit try not to go into the uh, the shaded areas and what you can do is just to make sure you realize where the shaded areas are is just cross them like that cross hatch them and there's going to be like a shaded area here these lines will mostly disappear when we begin painting and there's going to be a shaded area here now try not to get your wax crayons in that area And perhaps doing a bit too much but let's just see what happens there we go and now we're ready for our first wash so what I'm going to do very quickly is just use cerulean blue and put in the sky just pure cerulean blue and then I want that to dry a little bit 
Then I'm going to get some yellow ochre and I'm going to start doing these buildings. Now the important thing here is to vary the colours. So I'm going to use some burnt sienna now and you really want to vary the colours. A touch of burnt umber, not too much. And then even a little bit of alizarin crimson. And maybe little touches of white are perhaps okay as well. Okay. And strengthen the mix. Sometimes do a real thick burnt sienna. And then sometimes a very watery yellow ochre. few touches of burnt umber, some alizarin crimson, and this is how we make a, a pretty looking wall. And then this is where I have to be careful. You can leave a white line and then they won't merge much together and it's pooling at the bottom there so I need to wet my brush, dry it, dry it on some tissue and then just wipe up that. Okay and then also it's pooling here. Okay and I was originally going to do this building a light blue colour but we are being quick here, so I'm not going to bother. But originally this was a kind of light blue building. Okay, that's pure burnt umber. A bit more alizarin crimson down here. Beautiful colours, right? Maybe do a bit of splatter here. Ooh, it went into the sky a bit. I'll just leave that. So be careful if you do splatter not to get it in the sky. And then down here at the bottom, we want to cut around these figures and their heads. If you can. You don't have to. And if you find it really tricky then just use the bamboo brush, which is what I'm going to do in a minute. Okay, get the bamboo brush. Okay, we, we've almost done it. So beautiful stone buildings, right? Lovely textural features. So with this bamboo brush, you can cut around these figures really easily. And then, let's have a look. I might do a touch of splatter and actually let's just get the 
spray bottle and just spray. Now you might want to cover this guy. The next thing I want to do is just collect these pools of water. I just um, use my bamboo brush and just soak up these pools of paint. That'll do. Then get my mop and just pure water. It's slightly tinted. Just very slightly tinted. And I come down to about here and then I'm really going to darken it up. So here we go. Really darken it up now. Well, with yellow ochre. And then I'm going to use some burnt sienna, very thick. And then finally, right here at the bottom, some burnt umber. So it is an exaggeration and I'm using it quite thickly. But I just think it, it looks better. Then I'm gonna spray this and spray this and then leave it to dry might take a while now for the most difficult part of the painting the shadows so i'm mixing up some phthalo blue some alizarin crimson and here we go. Ho, ho, ho. Mix it up a bit better. So you want to be careful at these edges. Oh, there we go. That was lucky. Oh, that's a bit wobbly too. Okay. And then, as this goes down, it gets much stronger. So I'm going to use a load of burnt umber. And then finally phthalo blue with that and I'm going to use my bamboo brush because I need to paint around these figures and maintain these whites it's not absolutely essential We can just paint them over the top. And you see how all the pencil lines disappear? Now this line is not right, so let's try and improve that. Okay, there we go. That's better. And then over here, we've got 
another shadow on this building so a purple mix where it got mixed with the burnt umber so it went a bit more grey and I should get closer to the paper to do that but there you go but you can see the yellow underneath coming through which is nice okay and then a shadow coming down here now I'm going to use cerulean blue first for this because the shadow begins quite light and then as it comes down it gets darker and then even darker Ooh, that's perhaps too much should have been a bit more of a purpley colour first And if you go over, just use a tissue. And then you'll be fine. That, that's looking quite nice. I just want to spray it in the hope that I might get a tiny bit of texture. Okay, then the next thing is we're going to have a shadow here about here on this building and it's going to merge with this a bit they're going to bleed into one another and that's okay but as it comes down it's going to get darker And then back to bamboo brush so I've got one brush in one hand and the other brush in another okay and then we want to do maybe some dry brush lines with the rigger so bit of alizarin crimson bit of thalo blue a bit of burnt umber mix them up and then on the rag get rid of excess water so now we can do hopefully dry brush strokes and remember to get the angle right it's so easy to get it wrong and we're kind of, we're connecting these two shadows together which will give unity to the painting okay let's spray that spraying keeps it alive so we can keep painting on it and adds just a bit of texture to it and then we need a shadow here so begin with a kind of light red and I need to get close to this and it really helped me shading this up in fact I did this wrong it should have come there so these pencil lines can disappear so quickly once you begin painting and it can be so difficult to see where they are okay I think we're okay with that
now I'm holding the brush about the midpoint but it's probably best to hold it near to the tip for this part because you have to paint very carefully and try and get it correct especially this bit and anyway especially the edges the reason I'm holding it like this is because I'm filming and um, it's difficult for me to get my head down near the paper or my hand down near the paper so that's the only reason why I'm not doing it that way okay so I think that looks quite nice now a few um, dry brush strokes with the liner brush use the rag to get rid of excess water and hopefully we'll get some dry brush marks they're not coming yet Oh, a little there. And if they go wrong like that, if you're very quick, you can wipe them up a little. And that actually looks quite good. So I guess that's another way of creating texture, which is wiping marks out with a tissue. It's not something that I want to do a lot of in this lesson, but maybe in the future okay it hasn't dried yet but can we add some details I'm going to try and add with alizarin crimson phthalo blue and a lot of burnt umber some windows so over here just one stroke so this is loose painting right one stroke finished and then maybe here a window and then wow, I almost can't see these windows one there I'm guessing a bit now one here I'll look back at my drawing I'm not sure I put them in the right place there we go just do your best and then yeah just go with it and then one up there these are shutters and one here get the lines right and then line across here oh a bit wrong okay and then as we come down here so yeah I got the windows wrong I think but there we go and it's dried here and just an indication it doesn't have to be too strong so some of this has dried and some of it hasn't I might want to put real thick paint in here oh and I've got a hair it's maybe best to leave that and take it out later we could do some scraping I'm not sure if I want to risk it but we could do so that's basically that done let's leave it to dry
Okay, so let's do the figures. So first of all, I like to do the heads. Thetho blue, alizarin crimson, and burnt umber. And uh, just um, do black there, black there. And I have to speed up a bit. This is supposed to be a 20 minute watercolor sketch. Okay. Then maybe it's time for the bamboo brush. So I'm just going to do the legs now. I'm going to use the same mix, but a bit more burnt umber and a bit thicker. Use my rag to get rid of excess water. And then hopefully I can get a dry brush effect. Now this is tricky. If you want to use some scrap paper, go ahead. And we flick down quickly. Too wet like that and he went down a bit further than I wanted but that's okay and then this figure too Ooh. and I didn't really get the dry brush effect there but there we go just do your best and then I might do a bit of yellow ochre for his shorts. Okay, and this guy, that white shirt looks quite nice. I might just do yellow for his hat. Yellow ochre again. Maybe a bit thicker. Hopefully that's dried. I'm leaving a tiny bit of a white gap. And this is a bit too wet. So just dry my brush and pick some of that paint up. Let's go on to shadows now then. So now, <coughs> sorry. Now I need some phthalo blue some alizarin crimson and a um, touch of brown burnt, burnt umber and um, get the angle right so it looks to be going like that and then here like that and then I press down to make the shadow a bit thicker and then him too like that press down and what I should have done is had a figure close to this wall and then a shadow going up that would have looked really good and then my other shadow what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to use cerulean blue again for the edge of the shadow and it's going to be quite dramatic something like that there's going to be a bit of a corner there I'm not sure there really is one in the picture. And you can you see the angle of the shadows going down here? I'm exaggerating that just to make it look more interesting. That's maybe overdone, but I like to do that a little. Then purple here. And then mix it all up. And we're going to get really thick now. And I perhaps should have left that shirt, but I didn't. And then I get my mop brush. And this is really good for thick. And perhaps that shadow is too blue or hasn't mixed well enough. So I'm just going to do it again. And then add some purple and mix it in and that's better isn't it and that'll fade off nicely and then I'm going to get a load of blue a load of burnt umber quite thick and just put it in here look at that 
you do sometimes have to go a bit thick otherwise nothing happens it all fades and it just looks like nothing's happening so I think now we need to work on this figure and we need to blend them into this scene this figure is so important because this figure connects the background with the foreground okay and then we might spray this with our spray bottle uh, and I can take this hair out while we're waiting there we go it did leave a bit of a mark okay Oh, we've got a bit of a paint going wrong there. Just wipe it off. Okay, so maybe we just need to leave that to dry a little and then we can do the final touches. I might soak up some of this paint. There we go. Now let's do the finishing touches to our painting. So what I want to do is some shadow effect and also maybe before that some skin tones, some faces and arms. So for that I use yellow ochre and a touch of alizarin crimson. Oh, move my brush. It's so important to be organized. So. I use mostly yellow ochre but a little alizarin crimson so um, I think this is all dried so let's just test it here with this person okay and then an arm coming down here and an arm coming out here and this man here maybe an arm coming down here it went out a bit so just quickly dab that and then his hand there hands are very tricky and then another arm coming down here and a hand here okay and then with this figure maybe there's an arm here and another one here okay and then let's do suggestion of a head I mean a face here we can see the side of their face and the same with this person just step back a bit and have a look if that looks all right maybe this face looks a bit this head looks a little bit small so maybe we can do a bit of a neck and a bit of a head maybe a little bit of a nose I didn't really want to do too much detail it's just a sketch and then a hand here well an arm coming down like this okay something like that maybe should be a little bit longer but I think that will do uh, then again let's make it a little bit longer okay here we go
and a bit meatier there we go okay so I think that will do and then yeah I think that's okay we just need to leave that to dry and then do shadows and we'll be fine Now the final thing we're going to do are some shadows on these figures. Now I'm almost hesitant to do this because I just love the bright whiteness and part of me just wants to leave it like that to be honest. So what I'm going to try and do, there's some pencil here, I'm going to erase it. What I'm going to try and do is make these shadows as light as possible so almost invisible if i can do it so i'm going to use cerulean blue because it's a really light blue it's good for light delicate work so i'm going to use some cerulean blue and then just a touch of alizarin crimson and a bit more and then keep playing with this until I get the right mix I think it needs to be a bit more purplish and then here we go so maybe just there is enough for him and this figure to be honest this this should all be in shade but I just don't want to do that Ooh. there's a gap there and then maybe this figure maybe he's all white okay and do a little touch on the arms and a little bit on the hat just a bit here okay and then this figure here maybe his face is going to be a bit in the shade and then down here and just try and create some creases in that shirt not easy to do and I might even do some dry brush for his legs so this is a thick mix now Let's have a look. I just, I should have done this when it was wet, but I didn't, so. It just has to be dry brush. smudge that in hopefully that to a bit again and smudge it in okay so I think that's as much as I want to do with that it is after all a sketch but you can you can get carried away so easily so easy to get carried away and do more and more and then this arm maybe here it's darker so just grab some tissue and just darken this arm 
down here hopefully there we go and just a little bit darker there so I'm going a bit dark with this figure and normally I add white gouache for the highlights but I don't actually need I don't actually need any um, gouache in this case I think it's mostly all done everything's got a highlight maybe a touch here on this figure so I get my um, liner brush and some um, titanium white and straight from the tube no messing around and here we go I'm not super happy with this figure but there you go and that will do so I think yeah that figure doesn't look quite right but it will do mm, maybe not <laughs> so what you can do is if you do make a mistake like I think his arm needs to come down even more you can just wipe out but I don't recommend you do this too often and then I mean even that looks better already then you can get a really thick mix for the skin yellow ochre touch of alizarin crimson and then let's try and put in a meaty arm here just needs to come down a bit more than before just need to correct his shirt a bit so maybe I need a bit more like um, a dark bit here and just darken that and then maybe that looks a little bit better yep and then just darken this bit of his arm here okay and then even the back of his head I think bring it down a bit more okay so this is corrective work that I'm doing now and I might even bring his skin down a bit more his face sounds a bit distasteful doesn't it okay and make it a bit simpler just simplify it and then restate that blue bit mm -hmm. like that okay and then <sighs> that's a little better just make that back of his head a bit darker okay and then he needs a bit of a sideburn okay 
yeah and I think that will do I'm hoping I shouldn't have gone in there <laughs> so this can happen you can really make a bit of a mistake and then it can become a bit of a nightmare so it needs more blue but it's all practice and there we go and no there we don't go <laughs> let's step back I'm getting a bit of it's um, a bit shiny and so I think that will do actually I think that's okay with him not still not 100% happy with him I might just try to just do this arm a little bit better okay yep that's about as good as it's going to get I think not too bad okay but it's not quite right could be better okay and final thing we've got a bit of a brown mark here so if you've got these brown marks in a white area just wet your brush then with pure water just wipe it you have to be a bit persistent and we might not get complete removal of this mark but we can get most of it off so let's have a look yeah that's better than before and if we really hated it we could use some white gouache and just cover it cover it up and just do that and I guess really those legs should be um, skin color so yellow ochre touch of alizarin crimson bit wet so use my rag and then let's give him some legs I love to draw these calf legs beautiful shape okay and I think that's it we've finished okay so please have a go and happy painting adventures <laughs>